Hey there YouTube, Far North Racing here. Look what we found in the bargain basement section of Canadian Tire today. On for half off. 50 Canadian bucks get you a Mastercraft polishing tumbler, a vibratory tumbler used for putting a nice surface finish on metal parts that are too small to be able to deal with by hand. We're going to unbox this thing and have a look and, and see how well it works. So we'll just use the old Ulfa on here. I find it works better than the bridge port. So I don't even have a bridge port. I have a smithy. But anyways, knives work better for opening packaging than end mills. Just open it up and see what's inside. Huh. Empty. Step two. Fill the tumbler bowl full with polishing media not provided. Well, how about that? So given that I live in Oromukto and there isn't any uh, polishing media readily handy, uh, we instead went looking for something we could use based off of local sources. And what we found is this walnut shell based uh, cat litter. Uh, this apparently is the same stuff that they use in um, polishing media. It's made out of a crushed walnut shell. So we'll just go ahead and pour this in here and fill it up using about four pounds and that should do it. Okay, so I've gone and run these parts in the uh, crushed walnut overnight. Uh, we've got our aluminum weld test. Our aluminum extrusion, a cadmium plated bolt, and two regular rusted bolts in here. So a total of seven hours of running time uh, so far. Uh, on this here, uh, didn't do much. Uh, interesting that there's a bit of a shiny spot here where it was apparently rubbing up against the side of the container or maybe uh, another part. Uh, that's got a little bit of a burnish on it. A little bit of the burr here has been knocked down, but for the most part, you can't really tell if that was in there at all. Uh, the aluminum extrusion, the side here is nice and shiny. It's not polished, but it is shiny. That's not much different than one hour runtime, so that's sort of useful for one hour. Cad plated bolt with some rust on it. It did take off some of the rust. Uh, there's still quite a bit there. I didn't touch the cad plating itself. Yeah, that's not very useful. And this rusty bolt and this rusted nut uh, didn't touch it at all. As far as the crushed walnuts and this vibratory polisher are concerned, uh, pretty much a bust. Could use it on the uh, aluminum extrusion, I suppose, to make it a little bit shinier. But uh, I can also take 10 seconds in the, in the buffing polisher and, and do a better job. So this, uh, this kitty letter stuff, uh, that's a no-go. So we've had this upper spring perch uh, in the uh, bead blaster, and I've been chewing away at it. And although it's looking a lot better than it was, there's still a lot of rust in here like down in here in this corner and all along in here you can see where it's pitted there's a sort of rust embedded in the pits it's proving to be pretty resistant to my bead blaster with the media that i've got in it so i'm looking for another way to get some of this rust out and finish the cleanup on this job so we're going to try this evaporate rust stuff uh, i've seen some reviews of it online uh, you basically soak the part in this for a little while and it burns the rust off without having to be acidic. So we're going to immerse this part and a couple other bolts and stuff we have lying around and we'll see what for. So I've gone and raided the wife's kitchen and uh, found this food tray here. It's got a lid to help keep it from evaporating. We'll just pour in a layer of this. Mmm, a nice golden piss yellow. Just going to slide this part in here. Not quite covered. We're also going to throw in this uh, cadmium plated bolt that failed on the walnut uh, blasting media for the vibratory polisher. Same deal here, a rusty bolt and a rusty nut. We'll throw that in there. Put the safety lid on. And we'll just move that out of the way. This stuff is... Uh, 
supposedly reusable. I can go ahead and let it do its thing and then let the rust uh, precipitate out and then pour it back into the container. So one of these things is supposed to last a lifetime. So we've had these parts soaking in the evaporust uh, tray for a little, uh, little under 24 hours now. Uh, here's the control group. These are two parts that came off the same job. You can see how encrusted that the rust is on here. These are off the suspension of the Stealth. So after 24 hours of soaking in here, the rust is almost gone. There's a couple of little spots like right in here, there's a little bit there, uh, a little bit in the threads. But for the most part, it has taken the rust right off. A little more soaking and that will make them completely clean. Uh, one thing I did notice is that bolts like this, so that one had been CAD plated or, or uh, dichromate plated, it took the gold right off. The, the underlying zinc, whatever it is they used to, to plate this with, is still there, but the gold finish is completely gone. It, that, that dissolved as well. This one here is interesting. This nut, this washer had been completely rusted to the underside of this bolt here. And uh, the stuff got in there. You can still see there's some rust flaking out, but it, it released that part. So that's, that's kind of handy. That'll actually break that stuff up. Uh, it's not fast. Because this has been soaking for 20 hours, it's, it's, what, about 18 degrees Celsius here in the shop. So maybe it's a temperature thing. Maybe chemical reactions tend to work better when it's warm. So maybe that's slowing it down. But it is working. This part here, uh, a little more mixed, was getting in here and pulling the stuff out of the pores just fine. But like in this area here, it's deposited what I think is the chromate coating from some of those other bolts. And it tends to leave this sort of gray-black sheen over everything where the rust is dissolved in the part. Uh, you can see here, you know, just that coloration. It's, it seems to kind of redeposit it all over the place. So this larger part, so I'm going to hit that in the bead blaster again and see how that cleans up. And there's a couple of spots, like in here, there was a, a thicker piece encrusted. Uh, another one over here, a spot I missed with the bead blaster right there. It didn't touch that. So it seems like it's really good with a sort of a light surface coating, bolts it works on. Um, natural application, I've got a couple of rusty parallels for the mill that uh, they're, they're a bitch to clean off. So soaking in this, I think, is that's the, the perfect application for thicker, more encrusted stuff. Uh, bead blasting, a mechanical means of removal is probably a better way, or perhaps in conjunction with it, like, like I've done with these. So here's those spring perches after they've been through a quick trip uh, through the bead blaster. And you can see that the, the bead blaster is clean. That I, the uh, evapor rust has taken all the rust out of these pits, or it wasn't before, so that's good. And then the bead blaster has gone to remove that, that sort of grayish sheen that the evapor rust left on it, and uh, mechanically knocked out whatever, whatever dirt was left in there. So that's good to go. That turned out really well. That's ready to go off to the uh, powder coater to get uh, redone. Uh, it looks like if you play to this thing's strengths, mechanical rust removal to start with to knock off the worst of it, get it down to a surface rust or where you can't get the mechanical bits in, soak it in the evapor rust, that burns off some of it, loosens up the rest, back to mechanical, and there you go. So I've given these parts a, another 24 hour soaking, and then I threw them in the vibratory polisher with some brushed walnut shells uh, to use to clean them up. I ran them for about 20 minutes. That's the crushed walnut shells that I used uh, from an earlier test. When I ran them overnight, they'd broken down into a kind of flower dust. So all that really did was pack dust into the threads on these things. So I'm, I'm not really sure. I'm not convinced with walnut uh, shells as a, as a vibratory medium. But anyways, so here you can see the, the final result. And that thing is all nice and cleaned up. There's not a speck of rust on there. And by way of comparison, here's the before. Here's the bolt from the other side. So you can see all the the crusted rust in here, and this the general sort of schmutz all over it. Uh, some of these bolts, you know, that cleans up just fine. Probably didn't need a full 48 hours. Uh, here's a 24 hour soak with a, a rusty parallel. You can see it's still, still stained. It's got this gray over it. I just, all I did was wipe this down uh, after it was finished. You can't use a blasting material or abrasives on a parallel, otherwise it doesn't, it's not parallel anymore. Uh, but that, that seems to have done the job and 
supposedly by letting it dry off like this, it's gonna it's got a coating on it that prevents it from rusting again. So we'll see how that works out. So uh, I'm gonna call this a win. The stuff works. You said it's not fast. Uh, I did recover all my solution by filtering it through a coffee filter. And that took out some of the worst chunks. If you really wanted to get good with this, you could build yourself a little sort of aquarium tank with a couple of bottles of it and run it continuously through a filter just to keep it circulating and take out the crap as it comes in there. But uh, for 20 bucks a bottle, that's reasonable. There's no odor. It's not corrosive. It's not toxic. It's easy to work with. That stuff's pretty good. I think, though, we might be able to do even better. So let's try something else. So the crushed walnut shell kitty litter was a bust. Uh, didn't really do much and broke down into a fine flower that got to be a pain in the ass to deal with. So I've gone and bought myself some proper abrasive media for this. Uh, this is plastic resin rust removing pyramids. They're sharp little things like this. You see them there. Uh, this is supposedly the stuff you use for removing rust on steel. So I've gotten ordered myself uh, four pounds of this and we're going to try a couple of the bolts that we ran through the EnviroRust stuff earlier. Put that in there. Uh, we've got two of the nuts that went through EnviroRust. We'll put that in there. Uh, we've got two and washers from the EnviroRust. We'll put that in there. Here's that piece of aluminum extrusion. That goes in and this weld tester from another project. We'll put all that stuff in there. Uh, we're just going to run this for a quick 15 minute run and see what it does before I test it with rusty parts, which is what it's supposed to do. Alright, let her rip. So what we have here is an example of uh, what happens after we put some samples in the plastic media. These little, uh, little pyramid looking things here. So we've run these parts in the plastic media for uh, two hours. Now, there wasn't a, an appreciable difference beyond much more 30 minutes. Um, the two hours didn't do much more than uh, powder some, some media. So there doesn't appear to be any, any point running it longer, about 30 minutes. So anyway, here's our results. Uh, this piece here, which was the um, machine surface here and the bead blasted surface here with a bit of a burr, it's dulled up the machine surface a little bit and it's taken a little bit off the burr, but the burr is, is still there. So as a deburring or polishing mechanism for, the, for this aluminum, uh, that's not working. You can see right there that that's... Yep, so as a polishing solution for that, NFG. Aluminum extrusion, it's actually dulled it up a little bit compared to what the uh, walnut shells did. I didn't touch the machining marks on here. There was no burn there beforehand, so it didn't do much. So probably better off with this using just walnut shell for you know 20 minutes. I've now seen that you can get walnut shell impregnated with jeweler's rouge. That might be a better answer. I'll try that at some other point in time. But for the triangle media on aluminum extrusion, nothing. This and this are two bolts that went in. This is what it came when after it was in the evapo rust. And this is the evapo-rusted piece after two hours in the media. Again, after half an hour, not, no appreciable difference. It did brighten it up a little bit. Some of the sort of scaly bits on here have been smoothed out a little bit, but not a whole lot. It's a little bit brighter. The evapo-rust tends to leave this dark grayish sheen to things. So by throwing that in there, it brightened it up a little bit, which I suppose has some worth. After two hours, though, the, some of the media was packing into these, um, into these threads. You can see it coming off on my scriber here. Uh, to get that out, I'm going to have to hit that on a wire brush. And given the whole point on this was to avoid those kinds of manual steps, uh, putting in for that long is uh, not working. So potentially evapo rust, and then 15, 20 minutes in this so it's not packed into the, into the threads would serve as a step to brighten that up. Uh, here we have evapo-rusted uh, washers. Here's the cleaned up version. A little bit of a change, but not a tremendous amount. Uh, over here, same deal. Evapo-rust only. Evapo-rust plus the, um, the, the uh, resin media. 
It took the black off, but didn't do much more than that. Here's another bolt of Apple Rust followed by two hours in the in the uh, resin media. This one here, I ran a tap over it or a dye over it to clean up the threads, and so that cleaned up pretty nice. Uh, a little bit shinier than the other ones. So okay, but this one is the surprise. So this is a bolt that was rusty and not evapor rust treated when I threw it into the media. And the media, after one hour, because it only got one hour in this one, took off most of the rust. There's a little bit on the corners in here, a little bit on here, a little bit on here, and there was a little bit where it was really packed in deep on these top threads. Uh, but there, all the rust that was in here has been knocked off. So this is intriguing, because this says I can throw that into, into the media for probably half an hour to an hour, and it will knock most of the rust off a rusty bolt. That will save a lot of time on the evapo rust treatment. So this is starting to look like a reasonable sort of treatment would be half an hour in the, in the media, then dissolve it in the evapo rust to get off whatever's left, then back into the media again to knock off the gray sheen that the evapo rust leaves, uh, and just not leave it in too long so you start packing threads up. The, the question that this sort of poses though is how is this any better than just running it through a wire brush or uh, hitting it with the bead blaster. The difference, of course, though, is that in order to run a bead blaster, you have to have a bead blasting cabinet and you have to have a air compressor capable of feeding a bead blasting cabinet. And not everybody is quite that lucky. So if you're short a bead blaster and you need to clean off bolts that have rust on them, the vibratory polisher and the evapo rust together make a pretty good combination that will probably get off what you need and work reasonably well. And given that most of it is unattended, it's nowhere near as much work as having to feed these things one at a time into a wire wheel, especially if you don't have a wire wheel. So it turns out I can't leave well enough alone, so we're going to try this again. These are three of the bolts that hold the throttle body onto the stealth intake manifold. This one here is in pretty good shape. It still has most of its CAD coating, a little bit of rust on the corners, but for the most part it's in pretty good shape. This one here is the medium. It's got a little more rust on here. The CAD coating has uh, faded quite a bit. And this one here is the, the black sheep of the family. It's got quite a bit of scunge and corrosion on it and some actual rust down in here. So we're going to throw these three things into the plastic media in the vibratory tumbler for 30 minutes and we'll see how it turns out. So here we have those same three bolts after spending 30 minutes in the uh, vibratory polisher with the plastic rust removing uh, media, the resin pyramids. Uh, here you can see this one here which was in pretty good shape to start with. Uh, it's cleaned up. It hasn't touched the, the, the um, CAD coating, it's left it on there, and it's cleaned up the little bit of scunge that was on. A little bit of media packed into the threads, but other than that, not bad. This one here, the middle bear of the bunch, again, it cleaned up the CAD, took off a little bit of scunge that was in here, some media packed into this, but did clean up the bolt head nicely and took off a little bit of rust that was in there. And this one here, which was the black sheep of the family, it's taken off most of the surface rust, in fact, all of the surface rust along the shaft, there's a little bit left in the top parts of the threads here, but it has made done a, a significant job of cleaning that up. That's way better than it was before. So it seems that if you want to do a quick cleanup of a bolt that's got some rust on it, it's not too terrible, you can throw it in the, the resin media in the, in the tumbler and that'll take it off and clean it up and you're good to go. If it's a little more corroded, a subsequent soak in the evapo rust, given that the media has taken off some of it, will take off the rest of the rust. It'll also strip off any, any coatings that are on it, and uh, that will make it rust free. Uh, then, subsequently, back in the media, we'll take off that black sheen that the evapo rust leaves on it. Uh, if you don't have access to a bead blaster, though, the plastic media vibratory does the job for 90% of it, and a subsequent soak in, in evapo rust will definitely take down the rest of it. So overall, works as advertised if you feed it the right media. Still haven't found a good solution for polishing aluminum parts or deburring aluminum parts because the straight up walnut shell didn't do a good enough job and the plastic media doesn't really do much to aluminum. Works fine for steel, doesn't do that. I've seen walnut shell impregnated with jeweler's rouge in a Cabela's. I may give that a shot and see how that works on aluminum. They use that for gun guys um, cleaning up brass cartridges so that Makes me think that might, that might work. We'll give that a shot and see what happens.
there you are. The plastic resin rust cutting media, 30 minutes in the tumbler, cleans the rust right off your bolts, good to go. And there doesn't appear to be any real benefit going much beyond 30 minutes. More is definitely not better. Thanks for watching. Stop it, please. Come on, man, quick.